Uh, there's no discussion right now in the mm. Biden White House about removing those tariffs. And of course, if Trump gets reelected, his incoming administration is likely to impose even more tariffs, not just on China, but potentially on every other country. So the tariffs are going to remain in place. Uh, even though they are certainly an irritant from the Chinese side and they are costing American consumers and American companies quite a bit of money. It's interesting in conversations that we've had with uh, U.S. officials like Alexis Taylor, the uh, undersecretary of the USDA, that uh, the focus seems to be less on re-entry to CPTPP but more on uh, IPEF. Do you feel, Deborah, that we are seeing some momentum? No. on IPEF to no. make it fully formed or in No, in fact, I think IPEF actually collapsed in a rather spectacular fashion this last week when the United States pulled the discussion from the APEC agenda. So the idea was to sign most of the agreement la this week yes. um, in San Francisco, and instead they signed a portion of it behind closed doors and in quiet, and the remainder was pulled from discussion with a sort of vague promise to do something about it maybe next year. So as both sides try to work out where they stand, does Washington continue to hedge their bets and de-risk, decouple from China and build the counter-narrative through the China plus one strategic partnership with other countries in this part of the world? I think it depends on what kind of company we're talking to. For some companies, yes, they have actually put plans into place. They may have had them for a, a long-standing uh, plan in place to do China plus one for a variety of reasons. But a lot of companies are, are just still at the talking stage or are not even prepared yet to make a difference in the way that they operate their supply chains because at the end of the day, there aren't a lot of alternatives to China. The ecosystem, the speed, the ability uh, of the economy to deliver what you need and the quantities that you need it and the speed with which they can deliver it, no one else has. And so for a lot of firms, you know, they do this sort of risk assessment. They look all over for alternative sourcing locations, for example, and they come right back to where they were and they say, well, if it gets worse, then we will something or other. But, you know, I don't know what Not the, if India, it gets worse. Not Apple onto something by uh, relocating part of the supply chain over that? I think I can understand why firms want to de-risk and why India looks like an attractive alternative, but it is very hard to do business in India. You know, the, the, the length of time, crucially, it's the length of time that it takes, the amount of permits and licenses and so forth is forever. The, the time frame, the ability to acquire land, to build a factory, and then to staff that is really challenging in India. And Vietnam still has some way to go before they move up the value proposition. I think Vietnam's been doing well, but yes. if you talk to companies, what is the challenge that they're facing? One big one is staff. There just aren't enough staff that you can hire. The, the available slots for you to either get a factory or have a distribution center or whatever is also limited. So they're having some capacity constraints in Vietnam that make it a little less attractive than it otherwise would be. 